In this video, we're reviewing how to wrap an arm affected with lymphedema. We've already put on a good layer of lotion to the arm and hand to protect the skin from dryness, and we've put on a stockinette with a hole cut out for the thumb. First thing we'll do is we'll apply our fluffy padding to protect bony areas. So you could put a hole for the thumb and then go around the hand and wrist. It's usually good to double up around the hand to protect, like I said, the bony areas of the wrist and hand. Now you can spiral up the arm. And when you get to the elbow, you can reverse your direction just to give a little extra padding here. And then you continue spiraling. If you're using foam that your therapist cut for you, you would apply it now. So apply the lower half first, lining it up like your therapist showed you, and then making sure that you're not covering the crease of the elbow. Ideally, you'd have some overlap that you would fold over. Take your stretchy gauze just to hold it in place. You can tuck your gauze in and then apply your top piece. Okay, line everything up, try to tuck everything in nicely and then continue securing everything with the gauze. The point of the foam is to make the bandage more comfortable and more dynamic. Okay. Now you can apply the finger wrapping. Anchor at the wrist, wrap around at least once, and then go towards whichever finger is convenient for you. In this case, it's the thumb. You just want to ensure full coverage and you're not pulling too tight. So wrap all the way up, back to the wrist. You could go all the way around again if you feel like you need to secure it and then back down. Most hands will require at least two uh, finger wraps. So I finished the fingers, but I still feel like I need to reinforce between the fingers so that when he makes a fist, there isn't a lot of skin showing, okay? So I'll go around until that's fully covered. Now that the hand is complete, we've made sure it's comfortable and there's no skin showing when the patient makes a fist, it's time to apply the foam piece. You wanna make sure the foam doesn't go down so far that it's on the fingers. And you secure it with your first small bandage, starting at the wrist. You can have the patient help you a little bit. And you're pulling down and smoothing as you go. When I come down and cover the foam, and you're going to go under the thumb. You can go back above the thumb again, and again across the palm, and then you repeat this for several turns until you've used up your bandage. Once the hand is complete and you've taped it, you start back at the wrist and you can spiral your way up. So don't pull very hard and smooth over. Remember you're covering 50% of the last bandage that you put down. And at the elbow, going to 
cross over above the inside of the elbow. You're going to go around and then cross in front. So you made an X for comfort and to allow the patient to bend the elbow without disruption from the bandage. Now that the hand is complete, you start with your next bandage. You can have the patient gently push into your belly to help stabilize the arm and engage the muscles of the arm. Start by anchoring at the wrist, pulling gently, and spiraling up. Remember, you're going to cover about 50% of the last spiral. Work your way up to the elbow, where you're going to create an X in front of the elbow to allow for comfortable bending. So once you get close to the elbow crease, come around and go up across the biceps or the upper arm, and then back down, so you've created an X here. So make sure it's smooth and flat, but not too tight. And then continue spiraling up the arm. The patient can keep their arm in, in a slight bend so that you ensure that you didn't do this too tightly. And then continue up the arm. Once you've secured the last bandage with tape, you continue after checking the pressure. You want to start where it feels soft. So it feels soft to me here. Smooth the bandage and give it a gentle pull as you come around. Again, remember to cover about 50% of the last spiral and work your way up. As always, you secure the bandage with tape. In some cases, your therapist will have you do a fourth bandage. When you're done, check that the pressure feels good to the patient and that they can reach their mouth and function using their with their bandage on. Um, of course, follow all your precautions your therapist has told you, such as taking the bandage off if you have increased pain or impaired circulation in your hand.